So the big exciting news at this meeting, I would imagine, is the ALF data. Mm -hmm. Do you want to comment on that? So I think it's exciting. I think it's, I tried to approach it uh, looking at both sides of the coin. Um, one of the issues is that only 5% of patients are ALK positive. Uh, that said, if they are ALK positive, we're seeing this robust response rate uh, that until recently was unprecedented. So I think in, in some levels it, it's great. I think uh, it's a proof of principle concept that we can find a target and, and get a drug that can target uh, something on a molecular level. Uh, and, and, and make a, translate that into a nice clinical response. So I think it's, again, paving the way uh, for this uh, molecularly targeted treatment. There's a lot of different other uh, molecular, uh, molecular targets out there that need to be exploited, um, but I, I, I think it's very exciting. I think it, it, even in regards of a proof of principle concept that we are able to find a target and use an agent that will translate into a clinical response by targeting that agent. Uh, targeting that, that, that mutation. I think it's exciting. Where is your personal research going to be going now? So this is my personal research, is looking at targeted therapies, uh, looking, trying to identify further, um, as of now, uh, with regards to the treatment of stage four uh, non-small cell lung cancer, we have the EGFR mutation and we have histology-based treatment. Um, and I think that we need to look further at biomarkers, gene expression profiling, um, to see how we can better tailor our chemotherapy or our novel agents uh, to these patients. And my last question, how did you land up choosing pulmonary oncology as your area? It sort of chose me. Uh, I was involved um, for two years in, in doing uh, prostate and genital urinary diseases, and when I finished fellowship, there was a, a pulmonary a thoracic oncology spot in a position that I, that I wanted to be at, at Beth Israel. So, and I think if you look at non-small cell lung cancer, it really has been far behind the other tumor types. And in the past few years, it is one of the more explosive areas, yes. uh, as, as uh, demonstrated by two, um, two plenary sessions devoted to non-small cell lung cancer. So I think we're seeing a lot of progress being made in this field, and we're catching up to the other tumor types. So I think it's a, an exciting field to be in, rapidly changing, evolving, and it's exciting to be uh, a junior member on the ground uh, looking at these changes happen. You know, mortality for lung cancer has just been so daunting that the idea that you are now entering an area of medicine where you will actually, we hope, see uh, a rising survival curve and that will be a, a fantastic challenge and reward for you. I think the operative word there is challenge and that's why I like it. I think we still are very much behind. Uh, most of these patients who have uh, lung cancer have multiple comorbidities, making it very difficult to treat them, considering they have heart disease or COPD. And that's why I think we have to make the push to targeted less toxic treatment uh, for these patients. But I, again, I think it's a very exciting time. We've, we've moved from the 70s and 80s where all we had was platinum agents uh, for these patients, and we're moving into an era where we're really coming up with, with small molecule inhibitors and monoclonal antibodies. And uh, the other area of interest to watch is going to be, you know, these gender differences when right. it comes to lung cancer. And also, what are we going to do with our young people, these, our young women who, while well, we've seen uh, the decrease of cigarette smoking in some of our young men, right. the opposite trend in our, our young women, what do you think that's rooted in? I'm not real sure why we're seeing this discrepancy between gender with regards to cigarette smoking. Um, I have a, a major interest in preventative medicine and preventative oncology. I think that's another area in which we really need to make strides at looking at how we can prevent these things, these cancers from occurring. Uh, it, it, with regards to the most preventable uh, tumor being lung cancer with smoking, and what is the best way uh, not only to pr prevent uh, the, an increased incidence of smoking, but what's the best way to prevent lung cancer from happening to the smoking patient? Is it annual CT scans? Are there other things that we can look at? So I think it's, um, I, I'm, un, I'm not real clear on why there's such a discrepancy between gender, uh, but I think it's an interesting thing to look at. I heard uh, that we've been talking in bits and pieces with physicians about the BRCA mutation, and while we know the uh, dominant cancers where there's impact, 
I heard actually from your colleague, Dr. Ocean, that there's some suggestion that perhaps a BRCA mutation can be linked to lung cancer. Now, I've not heard this before, so. That there is a suggestion of that. I don't think there's a lot of robust data. Uh, but it, there is some suggestion that BRCA, as well as uh, a, another popular um, target, HER2 nu, not a genetic, uh, has also positive. Uh, known for breast. Known for breast, is also positive in lung cancer. So um, I'm not real clear uh, on the association of BRCA. Something and, we'll and be lung. watching. Absolutely. Yeah, because I would imagine, I mean, it would be a, I mean, may, maybe that will be as we're seeing rising incidence of our young, young adults. Right and non-smoking young adults Correct. from lung cancer, perhaps we will ultimately find what the genetic link is. And I think that's where a lot of research is going, is looking at gene expression profiling, uh, looking at why some smokers don't develop cancer while others do. And I think if we could discern that, we could pick up a clinically enriched population to screen these patients better, those who are at higher risk of developing cancer. So Dr. Benjamin Levy, you're a man to watch and I will look forward to year after year seeing you and you'll get a, a few gray hairs in there. You won't be a junior doctor, but you'll be a senior physician and a major player in the paradigm shift. We call you rising stars. Well, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure meeting you. Okay. Thank you.